this Karate Master for this Aikido Master. And a lot of people are asking what I think about it. You're wondering why people are asking me? It's probably because I did Aikido for 15 years, taught it professionally, transitioned to MMA, learned from the best self-defense experts out there, had a couple of MMA fights, and recently participated in a self-defense championship. I also try to be as honest as I can about Aikido, which is something you don't always get. So. Let's get into it. There's something about this video that I liked quite a bit and other things which I didn't like as much. And I'll go for them one by one chronologically. What kind of Aikido do you practice and teach? Survival fight, not a ritual fight. Now that's a concept I more or less like. Fighting and surviving are related things, but they're also different things. As Ian Abernethy puts it in his Venn diagram, fighting, self-defense, and martial arts are related, but all three different things. Putting emphasis on surviving instead of fighting could be a smart move. I just wasn't as excited about the next thing since he Tamaki said. But if deer is attacked by a wolf, he will not confront him, but on the side, no, and kill him like this. The deer analogy is cool, but here's where I don't entirely agree. Tamaki names some MMA rules of what can't be done, even getting one of them wrong. The MMA is exactly this. You're not allowed to attack the eardrum, the eye, the back uh, of the neck, yeah. the knee, yeah, yeah. this and that. As many people misunderstand, attacking the knees in MMA is actually allowed. And just to make sure about that, I contacted my friend Ramsey Dewey, who also happens to be an MMA referee. Ramsey said, this. Yes, under both unified and universal MMA rules, attacking the knee in any way is 100% legal, including strikes and all forms of submissions. He also added, people make up fake MMA rules all the time to justify their beliefs about martial arts. The one I usually hear from my keto practitioners is misinterpreting no small joint manipulation to mean no wrist locks, when the rule refers specifically to bending or twisting one or two fingers. Now, Tamaki doesn't go to mention the small joint manipulation, but I see his point and I don't see his point. On the one hand, he's right. If an MMA fighter super used to fighting strictly under rules. He may be in a disadvantage in a physical altercation, as he may be spending too much time feeling out the opponent, or he may not be using additional moves or methods, such as for example grabbing an improvised weapon to receive an edge. At the same time, if you are able to beat another skilled fighter in a hand-to-hand -hand combat, you will stand a so much better chance against someone who wants to hurt you in a random environment, compared to a person who is not used to fighting other people. And that's where I get a little bit upset when martial arts instructors seem to downplay play MMA by sort of giving their own martial art a huge praise as they are not limited by MMA rules. But again, if you know how to fight already in MMA, it's very easy to learn to add an eye poke or a kick to the balls. That's not really something extraordinary. You just have to work on it for a couple of hours, keep it in mind, and essentially you're good, as long as you know already how to fight. And a great example of that is Jeff Chan, who in the Ultimate Cell Defense Championship fought for the very first time in his life against a knife attacker and a bat attacker. And using his MMA skills, he did great, even though he's not a quote-unquote self-defense guy. So while I see what Sensei Tamaki means, I wish he would be more fair to MMA and fighting and mention how great and useful these skills are that you can build on top of. Instead of, at least what it seems he's doing in this video, he's expressing that MMA is inferior to his approach to Aikido as it has rules. How your Aikido differs from regular Aikido. When you have circular move, we do our move uh, vertical. You change the axis. The whole circular axis versus horizontal axis, I can't say I personally see a huge difference. I mean, there is one. And traditional Aikido is fond of being circular. But from my experience, circular moves, especially big ones, they aren't that practical, since they give way too many opportunities to be defended or countered. Now, if Sensei Tamaki would here have said that he focuses on much smaller circles, like for example, a wrist lock, then I'd see more eye to eye. I try never to do any joint locks. So wait, wait. You never do any joint locks. No. Now here I'm surprised as much as Jesse is, since many Aikido practitioners mainly focus on joint locks. If I bring you a joint in an angle that is dangerous, then you will resist. Locks only works against youngsters who are doing some stupid stuff. I guess there's truth to people resisting joint locks, especially Aikido ones that I'm struggling to make functional myself. But I wouldn't go as far as to say that they shouldn't be used, period. I mean, even myself. These days I keep pulling off various Aikido wrist locks on people who are consciously trying to defend them, and even against people who know how to fight. On top of that, there are BGG experts who constantly tap out people with joint locks all the time. So I'm wondering what's the point really here? At the same time, if Sensei Tamaki would have said that he avoids joint locks in order to maintain distance, I could see a point there. You cannot control somebody without doing damage. That is why people who say Aikido is about uh, controlling people without injuring them are people who, who are never confronted to violence. I do appreciate this point. It's actually a baffling claim to make that you will go out there and end the fight without using violence whatsoever. I mean, it is technically possible, even if we're not talking about de-escalation, but it's extremely risky and difficult 
difficult to do. This is a bad distance. Israel should be here, no possible contact because uh, Aikido is about refusing the fight or if I'm not able to, I should be in. Yeah, this is a common cell defense slash fighting approach that you either should stay out or you should go in because that's where you are the safest, not in the mid zone. A lot of people think that Aikido should do more pressure testing. A hundred percent okay. That is always nice to hear from an Aikido expert. Aikido is about facing somebody who is stronger than you and you can only face somebody that is stronger with asymmetric tactics. That's an interesting concept as well. Finding an edge through various tactics, which is a valid self-defense approach. Again, not something that MMA fighters can't do, but it is something you ideally need to think about and do at least a little bit of training with. When we do uh, open frame, we bite, we poke the eye and we kick the ball. There is a self-defense approach where you spar and include imitation of biting, eye gouging and kicking to the ball, which I think is a good approach to condition yourself to using these moves. Obviously, I wouldn't do them for real to prevent injuring your training partners. But I think that's what Sensi Tamaki is talking about as well. When I attack you, I should never be like this and do no. this. Using a boxing guard, especially at the beginning of an altercation, is sometimes recommended against in order to not telegraph your intentions of fighting. Would I say never do it? I personally wouldn't. There's a place and time for many things. But this point, I guess, is debatable. If one guy was doing Aikido for MMA, mm -hmm. he could have results. Well, I'm kind of working on that and actually planning to work on it even more these days. And the results are slowly beginning to show. The crowds that Aikido attracts yeah. our loving people, yeah. people who don't want to get punched, who don't want to punch. That is true. Idealistic Japanese culture enthusiasts tend to make up the majority of Aikido students these days. And a lot of them are not really that much into fighting. And finally, Time for the sparring. Could we try some Aikido techniques with a little bit more resistance? Yeah, of course. Now, first of all, I need to say this. When I sparred with Jesse, he was not going easy with me, but I get it. We're friends. Good friends tend to be rough with each other. And I wouldn't go hard on a person that I don't know either. Nor does this type of sparring negate the abilities of the Aikido expert, which I do more or less like what I'm seeing of here. He's able to respond to various attacks. He uses timing to enter. He also uses head manipulation, which I learned during the Ultimate Cell Defense Championship that it works better than I thought previously of. There's also a bit of a sprawl here as a defense from a light takedown attempt. Sensei Tamaki shows the openings he would use without literally striking, which is usually a sign of skill under these conditions. His abilities are surely way above that of a regular Aikido instructor, who most of don't spar or do any life training at all. So I have a lot of respect for Sensei Tamaki for doing this. Now, does it look groundbreaking? No. Does it look like a unique approach to Aikido? Not necessarily, besides the fact that not a lot of Aikido schools do that. But the sparring itself didn't necessarily look exceptionally Aikido, and not something you can see in other styles. At the same time, this is a video which is 10 minutes long, and you can't box someone in based on what you see in a 10 minute video. All I can say is that despite disagreeing about something, I definitely see the potential in Sensei Tamaki's emphasis on preparing for survival instead of fighting, and that he seems to be able to handle himself under pressure, which is again much more than I can say about the majority of Aikido instructors. So kudos to him. If you want to hear the story of how I became disillusioned by Aikido and how I transitioned to becoming an amateur MMA fighter, click on this video right here, which is a new documentary series I started making recently, which at first I recap everything that happened in my Aikido journey until now, and then I'm going to move on into trying to make my Aikido functional again. And in the meanwhile, keep owning your journey.